Claire um, from the National Centre of Circus Arts. Um, can I just say that I'm very nervous. I'm kind of a bit shaking a little bit and uh, <laughs> this process of what we've been doing, this developing an aerial curriculum has taken a long time and come from a lot of discussion amongst teachers. Um, just a little bit about me, I'm an aerial teacher, I'm a yoga teacher, um, I'm an aerial rigger, um, I have done a, a, an associate teaching practice in higher education, uh, talking about learning and teaching, um, and I was a performer, I'm retired now. This, uh, the title is Developing an Aerial Curriculum. So the, the beginning of this it came from uh, the, the need for uh, our teachers to come together and be producing or teaching the same work. I hope that we can all come together and share these ideas and discuss after and give feedback and, uh, and that we can share and hopefully grow and evolve the art of circus together. So th this talk is about this evolving aerial curriculum that came from the process of the, the rope and the silk teachers at the National Centre for Circus Arts coming together and talking about what they were teaching. We used our first year, first, second and third year students um, to, as a starting point to create the ideas that we're using for this curriculum. It's a separate curriculum that we have for the, for the degree students on the rope and silks but this is a this is a process from the original curriculum and okay. development. Uh, together with the training director from the National Centre, Glenn, we developed this curriculum and we hope that it would become a wider module and a, a wider curriculum for teaching many circus disciplines. We use the, the aerial disciplines of uh, trapeze, static trapeze, uh, so so, uh, tissue and rope. So the, so the end, um, we wanted a curriculum that would allow for the individual to be able to learn and to be taught in a way that they could each develop at their own, in their own way. So they don't need to do, <coughs> first they need to do this trick, then this trick, and then this trick, or they can't do this trick, but that it was a gradual thing. So um, we wanted the circus students to understand their discipline well enough that they could eventually train and develop and create their own skills on their own. We wanted to have artists who can grow and develop their art form. Um, we wanted them, we wanted our students to eventually to know more than we knew, to push the boundaries of their own profession and of the generation that comes after them. We looked at the beginning position of where uh, students often come to circus. So sometimes it's recreational students, okay. recreational or the beginning circus professionals. We wanted to look at the the uh, the idea of giving uh, information against uh, the learning the skills or uh, the learning process. So what I mean is, I could give them this trick, this trick, and this trick, or I could teach them how the tricks would work. We wanted to make the students allow themselves to make as many uh, discoveries uh, and understandings as possible. The curriculum, we, we thought the curriculum should be a tool for organising the, the teaching and the learning. We hope it would help the teachers to run good classes and have a consistency from one class to the next and, and again with another teacher so and from one teacher to another. We wanted to uh, help the teachers with their lesson planning and allow the teachers to be clear with the students what they were teaching. Different ways to how we would uh, categorize the moves how we would break them down. We looked at the physics of the skills. What is the move? What is it doing? What are we doing? We considered the position of the body on the equipment when it was on the vertical. We looked at the direction of movement and we looked at which body part was the major body. And we worked out for us the best way to go forward was to use the physics of the skills. You can use many other different ways and I think that the list of skills is often a combination of these, but we chose one to develop. If we were teaching in a class, so we looked at, I want them to climb on the rope. It's a weight transfer using strength and going up. And 
that's just one of the things it is, but it's much more than that. It's a weight transfer with friction, using uh, using tension, okay. and using strength. Moi, pour uh, plus de simplicité, on peut, ils peuvent utiliser un exercice au sol, so flo uh, back and floor. You know the. La cellule ensemble que tu fais acrobatique quand tu vas en arrière, backward roll. Oui, c'est une boule à l'arrière en fait. Um, then we look at tempo. It's a, sometimes the describing of the of the information is very long, which is what I was trying to get with this one. But all it is is we're trying to break the movement down so the students can understand, and then once they have that basic level, then they can grow upon it. Does everyone know what half catch is? Yes, I have a picture. You have a tempo to go up. Demi grenouille. You have um, friction. <laughs> and you have uh, uh, tension. Hello. And there was a tempo to get there. Yeah, so. the tempo from here yeah. to there. Yeah. We can just read through them. I don't think I need to explain. <laughs> is a hip lock. So the other thing this works. position, but you see you have you, you have a gauche. small tempo where you're going, you have friction, and then you have you have the lock which creates the tension. So if you look at the move like that, it becomes a little bit easier to understand. So if the students understand all these principles, then obviously you can grow and make it further trying to get mermaid you're trying to get them to lean and to understand where they're moving on the bar the end movement is not important so when you're setting your curriculum you don't need to have a list of moves you can have just a list of ideas I want them to lean and hold with one hand and then as the movement gets more complex you could have a lean with one hand and use friction on the feet so it's a way of describing and getting the the student to move in the way you want without having to have a specific list of all these moves. So maybe by class four you might be emphasizing friction and tension a lot more. You might they may be able to already take their weight and get up easy enough. And so defining which moves to give the students, one of the ways that we try to do it is as I spoke before we had <coughs> principles, but then how do we make the principles even further, so we have under the bar, on the bar, or we could use one arm, one hand, just mm. different mm. ways to put them together. Mm. It's just, it's the, the development of the skills, so we're layering now, we've had the weight transfer, we've had balance, we're putting more uh, friction and tension, and then maybe in a later class we would have some more tempo, maybe we would start to look at suspension, maybe in class 8 or... We had the same for the rope class. We would assume someone that's come uh, is doing rope maybe has already done a little bit of trapeze before. We hope that they have done some, but not always. So it's the same principles with the transfer of weight and understanding where the body is on the equipment. It's working with the center of gravity and working out which moves were the very beginning moves that you could develop later on. It's just, I mean, you can look if you want, it, it's just an idea to understand how, just how we made it work. Big. So our, our next question, once we have, we have these first, we have eight classes for rope, trapeze, uh, so, so, and tissue, and now we want to develop them and make it grow bigger. We have, we have actually 22 written, but not, not as clearly as this. No. And Glenn, who... The, who is the training director? He's he's working on an acrobatic one using four principles too. Une connexion fort entre les un lien fort entre les deux. Um, they allow the student uh, to learn the skills, the movement, uh, the tricks. Uh, I will translate this in a second. N not by giving a preconceived notion. Or a name, uh, or a name of a trick, uh, but to make them understand what their body is doing in the space or on their equipment. Les deux, il permet à l'étudiant de apprendre les compétences ou les mouvements ou la figure 
euh, pas en lui donnant un, une notion préconçue, une notion préconçue pré 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 ou non, et, mais en lui faire comprendre euh, qu'est-ce que son corps euh, il fait dans l'espace ou sous son, son agré. Ça, c'est clair. Par exemple, euh, le rythme et le transfert de poids, euh, ça aide avec notre combat euh, contre la gravité. So, the rhythm and the weight transfer together uh, help with the understanding with the fight against gravity, or le rythme avec le temps et les suspensions. For example, the beats that we can do, for example, either on the pole or on the, on the, pop, on the rope, or for example, les fouettés qu'on fait, for example, sur les mains ou sur la corde, uh, or, uh, for example, on a fait l'exemple du le, <coughs> Il a remonté sans, euh, sans jambes, par exemple, à la corde. So the climb with no legs. Euh, à, de comprendre bien le rythme et, et les thèmes pour la suspension, ça aide vraiment. On a trouvé. Et, another example, euh, on disait que. Um, on a, we were speaking at one point about uh, uh, fear. So, for example, when we're talking about levels, like in Roberto's, and like going to higher levels, we were saying, Roberto was saying that often a performer goes from C to A, or stays only in B. Uh, on disait que, uh, Roberto hier disait que des fois, un uh, artiste, il va, de, il va de C à A, on le reste toujours en B. Et peut-être des fois, uh, c'est uh, la peur aussi, uh, il joue dans la, notre notion de l'auteur. So, fear sometimes comes. And so, uh, en utilisant, so using Claire's principles, uh, en utilisant les principes de Claire, um, So Claire's principles allows the understanding of the body in space that might help against fear. So, uh, en utilisant les principes de Claire, et ça peut aider avec uh, notre notion de notre corps dans l'espace et aussi avec l'auteur. Um, I hope that's clear. Um, and then, les deux, ils sont uh, applicables aussi sur le sol. So both. Uh, Both methodologies are applicable on the floor, which we found very interesting. So you can take a student on the floor in case you don't understand. So on peut mettre, on peut ramener un étudiant sur le sol pour lui faire comprendre. C'est tout clair jusqu'à là. And um, when it comes to as an artist, on pensait que Claire, uh, we, uh, sorry in English, uh, uh, Claire really refreshes uh, those things that we give for granted. Uh, so, uh, Claire, vraiment, ça, this is the part I don't know how to translate. Refresh. Okay. So, uh, donc, en fait, il dit que l'intervention de Claire a permis de rafraîchir les, les principes qu'on considère comme acquis. Uh, and Roberto really uh, helps you to push those boundaries within our own artist, artistry. So, uh, Roberto vraiment aide à pousser uh, cette limite qu'on donne à nous-mêmes dans notre uh, art. art. Okay, that uh, as a teacher, when you're when you're teaching in the beginning, maybe it's easier to use Claire's method uh, with the new students, and then later you use Roberto's method for expanding on it to help them expand that language that they started learning. Alors, nous avons pensé si ça c'est Claire et ici c'est Robert. Rhythm, body line, Nous avons pensé qu'est-ce qui passe si nous avons ce quartier ici. C'est entre le transfert de poids et le rhythm. Et nous avons pensé des Patrick, il a pensé de danse que ça c'est un mélange entre les deux ou euh, mouvement et moi j'ai pensé euh, au euh, beat fouetté Zenaida thought of it maybe as a, a, a trick uh, a figure yeah. that? Um, and then I can't remember who but somebody uh, said suspension uh, so we played with this idea on a joué beaucoup, on a, euh, euh, avec rhythm um, et équilibre. Moi, j'ai pensé au euh, euh, cœur, euh, le rythme de, de cœur, euh, et comment ça donne un équilibre dans la vie. 
euh, et aussi un principe de gravité. Um, heartbeat. Alors, ça continue. Et après, il y a un autre dessin. <rire> Alors, euh, moi j'ai pensé au marché noir. Et si nous pensons euh, aux figures de peut-être euh, un roux, euh, <rire> sur le marché noir, euh, ici nous avons, euh, euh, avant que la figure se commence, euh, the balance, ou équilibre, avant que ça commence. Euh, so before before You yes, this sorry, is the case of talking a about a cartwheel on a Chinese pole. Yes. So we just took a, uh, one example. Uh, um, uh, but with the balance, you could think of uh, it as the friction here as well. Um, uh, when they go for the move, when ça, ça commence, uh, le figure, ça donne le rotation. Um, uh, mais for, For me, the rhythm of this is uh, le transfert du poids entre les mains et les pieds. Et uh, comment uh, le corps, ça change les niveaux, ça c'est mm. au sujet des levels, les niveaux. Mais aussi ça c'est une question d'espace, comment on utilise l'espace mais dans, dans euh, le ver verticalité. Euh, Qu'est-ce qu'il y a dans le euh, Ah oui, aussi il y a des tensions. Et Lucas, il a dit que c'est aussi, c'est un balance, c'est un équilibre entre, euh, comment on le dit en français, euh, pousser euh, et si, tirer. Si, si, avec les pieds, et, euh, tout, ouais. tout, tout les mains, ouais. et tout tire avec les mains. Ouais. Okay. Peut-être que c'est For me, this was interesting to think about how uh, you might communicate with different students and actually one day it might be more useful to think of this as an equilibre than this, a thing with, of strength and tension that maybe that would uh, be liberating to, to be thinking of, of the balance here um, with that. Peut-être créer, créer, voilà. créer un autre chemin dans son corps. Ouais. Alors comme ça, nous avons pensé qu'on peut utiliser tout ça pour décrire une figure ou on peut euh, utiliser euh, des, des figures pour créer des, euh, des euh, phrases de, yeah, de, de mouvement. Et comme ça, ça peut créer des, euh, des niveaux. So we can either use that to explain it, or you can speak English. Well, it can go, it can <laughs> go around in circles. So. Yeah. Everything goes around in circles. You could, you could take, you could take a, a, a trick that you know, that you want to describe, and you could use this vocabulary and the relationships between these things to help you explain this trick. Or, like Roberto did, You would take these words and the relationships between to just initiate movement, initiate action, and that would create new tricks, or maybe they would come up with uh, a cartwheel on the Chinese pole. Maybe, yeah. So maybe if you gave this description, but you didn't show them the pole, maybe they would come up with a cartwheel on a pole, maybe something completely different. N'étant pas spécialiste, je vois vraiment le, le travail aérien comme, euh, comme un, un chemin euh, vertical, mais le corps euh, peut, écrire, euh, peut écrire dans ce chemin euh, dans toutes les directions.